In this video, we'll cover the basics of the asset model, uh, going through vulnerabilities, location, as well as asset categories, driving to their usage and how they tie into the network model. So let's just jump right in. So what is the asset model? Well, at its core, it consists of three resource types, vulnerabilities, locations, and asset categories. Uh, they ultimately fill out the network model and associate uh, these attributes uh, specifically to the assets or asset categories, network, or asset ranges. Uh, they can be applied across, you know, and inherited down through the resource trees as assets ultimately belong and map back through the network model. Vulnerabilities, you know, are, are just what you think they are. Locations contain the geographical information that are used to drive the map views that you see within the ESM dashboards. And of course, asset categories is the largest portion that give you dynamic schema that you can associate to the assets in order to group assets in any given way, uh, such as business units, priority, criticality, compliance, or virtually any other way that you can think of to group them. So the first resource type that we'll talk of in the asset model is vulnerabilities. Uh, as you understand, they're just, just that. Uh, they're any piece of hardware, firmware, software that ultimately leaves the asset open for exploitation, whether it be tracked through a CVE or bug track. Uh, the vulnerabilities ultimately um, are used to map to the individual assets. Uh, once the asset is identified and the vulnerability is associated, uh, typically through an ingest from a scanner connector, such as Qualys or Rapid7, those values are then are attributed to the individual asset. And as such, uh, once the vulnerability is defined, it helps to drive the threat level formula and the event priority that ultimately is associated to that asset, whether it be the target or a destination um, or source or attacker uh, portion of the event that is being evaluated through the threat level formula. Uh, ultimately, it drives the mo model confidence. Uh, so if the more recent uh, that this scan has occurred, the more confident are that it is accurate, thus driving the priority in a certain direction, as well as the relevance of, of, of the actual individual um, evaluation as the priority is being calculated. For example, is the port actually been scanned that it's open uh, or not? So is, if an attack vector is being seen in an event, helps to drive that end result. Locations are one of the more simpler resources within the asset model. Uh, it simply is a entry that contains the geographic loca uh, information such as latitude, longitude for an individual point. Now these locations are used to override any of the dynamic geomapping that might occur based on the IP that is observed in the event stream belonging to a particular zone, for example. So let's move on over to asset categories. So as we mentioned earlier, asset categories are a way to have an extensible schema where you can associate attributes to your assets, asset groups, asset ranges, zones, for example, where an, you associate an attribute, which could be, for example, whether or not the, the associated asset is in particular a low, critical, high, type of priority within the environment or whether or not it is part of your PCI compliance, your Sarbanes-Oxley, or all of the above. Uh, you know, the asset mo assets can have multiple attributes associated to it. Ultimately, you know, how the business wants to look at the data and group information can e very easily you know, be leveraged through the asset categories in order to achieve that within the asset model. So asset categories can be created uh, using the CCE in order to create the asset categories uh, within the tree structure and ultimately then associate the asset categories to your zone, your your asset range, your asset group, your asset individually. Uh, the, the asset categories are then used within the various types of content such as a filter or a rule by using the in-group uh, dialogue within the CCE in order to leverage the evaluation back into your asset categories. This is a way that, for example, if you were to look and say that the asset is in a group where the port is known to be open 
in order to drive a correlation, for example, or in order to bring a particular uh, group of assets forward in a dashboard. So now let's move over into the console itself where we can kind of walk through the vulnerabilities, locations, and asset categories and see how it can kind of be used within the console. Okay, so here we are logged back into the console right here in the dashboards. Let's go to where the elements are for, or the resource types are for the asset model. Uh, asset modeling, of course, the, the, those resources are located within the assets tab or resource type. And right here, you can see the three resources that we've been talking about in this, in this video, categories, vulnerabilities, and locations. So if we look at vulnerabilities, these would be here. Uh, there are a number that are there out of the box. They're automatically populated and added to as your scanner reports come in, whether it be from Qualys or Rapid7, for example, or Nessus, and automatically added as they are found. We can very quickly run a report on those assets, or we can do a right click and show the assets. And, and it'll return a active channel containing a list view of the various attributes associated to all the assets individually that have been found to have this particular CVE. So that's kind of vulnerabilities, you know, as far as that within the, as far as resource type locations, of course, that's used to drive this geo map, uh, source and targets, of course, having latitude and longitude information Let's say, for example, this was to be a large retailer and we wanted to override some of the IP spaces, especially private IP spaces, where they would not necessarily have a map that would go to an external geo. So what we ultimately could do is create locations very simply by going in and creating a new location. As you can see here, we can give it a name. This could be, let's say, store number 15, which could give be in, uh, let's say, New York City, provide the uh, appropriate latitude, longitude, region code, city, postal, other information. What that does is once it's created, then what you can use it to graphically represent your geographic information. And of course, lastly is categories. So asset categories is the one that's ex uh, largely extensible. As you can see, there is a lot of asset categories uh, grouped in various types, subtypes. For investigation, there's one here, uh, ArcSight Solutions, we can get into the compliance packs, whether it's regulation, uh, PCI. And then within PCI, there's each of the points, for example, cardholder daily. Does this asset contain cardholder data? Is it a POS system? The virtual um, combinations that you can come up with are, you know, are, are, are based on your imagination or on the requirements that are required, you know, that are come from the business in order to associate at, uh, information or those attributes that they're looking to place on how they may visualize, dissect, or evaluate conditions within the event flow as it's coming through the environment. Now, when we go to look to use these elements of the asset model in, in content, for example, we'll go over here and we'll, we'll create a, uh, sorry, let's create a, let's go to filters. So under filters, uh, let's go ahead and create a new filter. So within filter, we do have these two tabs for vulnerabilities and assets. So if we want to add a vulnerability based condition, let's go back to that CVE that we were talking about, click on it, say, okay, you can see it's been added into the conditions. So ultimately what it's going to look for is, is the source ID have that vulnerability. Uh, we can of course very quickly edit this and change which asset ID, uh, whether it be the agent, the source, the target, and such is, is looking for. Uh, we can add multiples into here. So let's say we choose another another CVE to go with it. You can see it automatically creates an and condition. It could be an or or not. 
So that's kind of the vulnerabilities there. Um, the dialogue will be very similar, whether it be a rule or other piece of content. If we're going to be back and looking at, so let's say for example, assets. Assets, as we saw earlier, has the in-group function. The in-group function is leveraged based on what we select here. So we could very quickly jump back into, let's look back in our compliance packs. We'll go back into a regulatory. Let's go ahead and do PCI again. Let's say this is a part of the DMZ. Click apply, you can see it very quickly adds. Let's say it's not only in the DMC, but it's a publicly accessible server. And ultimately, one of the things I wanted to point out is when we're looking at the syntax here, you can see that having two assets using the in-group function essentially effectively creates uh, an AND condition. I'm, I'm sorry, an OR condition automatically. If we want to create this as an AND condition, simply add a second asset, move the element down for valuation, and we can see that that condition for the CVE right here is switched to an AND. So that's how you can kind of build out those conditions within the CCE when you're building out your content, leveraging the asset model uh, in order to drive the results that you're looking for. That's it pretty much for the asset model. So let's get back and uh, finish up the, the video. Thanks for joining me on this video uh, covering the basics of asset modeling.